It's a station that suffered something of an identity crisis. And it's built on reclaimed land from the River Thames in the 1860s. A feast for your eyes with disused sections and lovely art and tile work. Also, London Transport's Exhibition Centre. It is Embankment Station. Hello everybody, welcome to Series 4, Episode 5 of the Hidden London Hangouts. Today we're by the river and we're very, very happy. And thank you very much indeed to everybody who's watched the London Bridge episode. More on that. The numbers have blown our minds. I don't do this on my own. I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to guide us around tube stations, have a laugh, and probably get our flippers wet as we go into the river. First of all, Chris Nix from the London Transport Museum. Are you wearing your Frogman's outfit? Uh, morning, Alex. No, I'm not. I'm wearing my uh, my tube map one because we're somewhere on here today. Um, we are indeed. <laughs> I've See? also I've got for my closest mug that I can to this destination, which is my Strand mug. Oh, good work, good work, City Holloway. How's your mug looking? Oh, I've got. I don't have a theme mug today, but I have gone with a nautical look in in my attire. But it's just my old moment mugs tonight today. Loving that. Bit of uh, embankment joy there. And uh, Laura Hilton-Brown, you loved a little bit of relicking around in the dirt yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, it was very dusty, wasn't it? I feel like I've not put near enough thought process into today's attire. Um, I'm wearing nothing nautical and my mug says, shush, may contain Prosecco. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't think that's related whatsoever. It but wasn't. We go. did have a glass of wine afterwards, which was rather lovely. Now today, as the title suggests, we are at Embankment. It is an amazing station. We love it. Uh, right, the, the confluence, if you like, the District and Circle and the Northern and the Bakerloo lines of the station with loads of history, stuff we discovered yesterday. City knew all about it from the TV show. I'd never been there and had a look around before, although I'd been there many, many times. So today we're on a learning, discovery, odyssey. And Christopher Nix, first of all, potted history lesson, please, gentle folk. So this station originally opened on the 30th of May in 1870. Uh, it opened as Charing Cross, not Embankment. And um, it was opened by the District, uh, Metropolitan District Railway. Um, they did actually have plans to add a, a, a kind of an express line, that deep, uh, deep district line that we've talked about before, where there's a tiny bit of it built uh, over, uh, so you designed to go from Gloucester Road through to Mansion House and uh, Charing Cross would have been the intermediary station had they have done it. They abandoned that idea in 1908. Bakerloo line was the next one to go along there, 1906. Uh, they got there and they um, opened Embankment Station, more or less underneath Charing Cross uh, with an interchange. And then 1914, the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, what we now know, the Charing Cross as a branch of the Northern Line, uh, came along and the 6th of April 1914, they opened a, a platform there. Now I say a platform because they had extended down from the Strand and had uh, created a loop underneath the River Thames, a reversing loop. And on the northbound platform, the uh, northbound tunnel, they built a platform again with an interchange. 1915 the whole station was renamed Charing Cross um, rather than Charing Cross brackets embankment and then it carried on until 1976 under that name when the Jubilee line uh, came along to what we now know as Charing Cross that's when Charing Cross Station by the river was renamed Embankment. I do hope you followed all of that. Oh, blimey! <laughs> blimey! There's too much in there. So this is a station, as we said in the in, in the introduction, with a bit of an identity crisis. It's changed its name many, many times. It's been added to, it's been fiddled about with, it's been tiled, it's been retiled, it's been redecorated, and it provides a, a visual joy, as you're about to see, um, for the trained and untrained eye. A lot of this stuff is behind locked doors, but we had the keys, so we went and had a look. Christopher Nix, that's an old picture. What is it? Well, this is the original station. Um, you can see it's when we've looked at other district lines and metropolitan line stations of that era, they're brick built, they've got arches, they've got huge boards advertising where the places go, uh, where the trains go to, uh, to sell you this new concept of being able to travel around underground in the city. That's beautiful. Since I mean, this is a station that you went to for your telly show. Um, you, uh, did you find anything new in there that you hadn't spotted before yesterday? Um, I think 
I can't really remember. Well, the first time I ever went there was when we were doing the photography for the book back in 2018. And I think we only saw sort of part of what we did yesterday. I definitely don't think I, I'd seen um, some of the, the floodgates stuff, but most of it I'd spotted before. But I like, um, it was very fun showing you guys around it though. Um, but I love this um, this photograph, uh, particularly, don't you love those globes, those light globes that yeah. they have there? They're mm. beautiful. It's sort of reminiscent. Like. Would you not agree, Laura? It's reminiscent of the lights that are on the embankment now anyway. You know, the ones that the, the outside lights, street lights, if you like, those globes that run along the river. They're, they're very beautiful, aren't they? They are. And I really love the location of this station um, that rhymes. And um, I, I love it because it's kind of nestled between the lovely embankment gardens so close to the River Thames. And then you've got you're really close to a lot of those kind of big um, like hotels. Uh, you know, you've got the Savoy just down the road and you've got um, the there's one beginning with C can't remember what it is mm -hmm. but it's a lovely hotel and um and I just think that's a really lovely kind of enveloped station and it's it's really close to the museum as well so we all use it quite a lot just as kind of commuters and passengers so it's really lovely yesterday to go behind the scenes because I didn't know a lot of the story here um and I feel that I have absorbed some knowledge so it was a really lovely site visit enjoyed it gorgeous well we we enjoyed everyone being there it was wonderful the Corinthia oh. sorry the that Corinthia was we're back. <clears throat> it's we're a back. new one. We've got Tooting and now we've got <laughs> <You're right there. laughs> Marvellous. So that was 1897, Chris. Take us forward a couple of years to 1902. Yeah, so here you go. Um, nice uh, horse and uh, carriage outside it. And this is looking the other way back up to what you can see. Uh, the Charing Cross above, Charing isn't it? Charing Cross mainline yeah. station yeah. in the background. It's a really and pinched entrance, isn't it? You barely get entrance, one person in one person. Yeah, out. but also the amount of sort of it, I don't know. It, it looks bigger there than it does now. The the the, the well, bit of space between here and the river. Yeah. The... Well, I think that's also because the the station building that we have now, only a small part of it is actually the station, and then there are these side buildings to it that were all added. So I think it's different. But yeah, yeah. It just looks it just looks very very different. And of course, a bit of horse and car action there, Laura. It just it just takes you back to a moment in time, doesn't it? It does. Oh, well, I'm feeling a little bit sorry for the horse. It looks a little bit kind of um, <laughs> tired and dilapidated, doesn't it? <laughs> so, do you have you trying that car? That, that can't <laughs> oh, blimey. And then, also, then got... I, I find it interesting to look at the two trees outside of it that are kind of almost saplings there. And then, you know, <gasps> yes, and I, yeah? it's a giant <laughs> London giant tree. Now, aren't they? Yeah. Incredible. A beautiful. Just think that, yeah, how, how times have changed. And then, we, there was a, a glass roof, wasn't there? Yeah, the this is actually a photo that's earlier than both of those two. I think it was uh, 1894, I think, this one was taken. It's brilliant. It's got a train coming through, all kind of blurry, showing the speed of it. And so just to place this in, in location, this is the glass roof over the district and circle line platforms as we know them now. So once upon a time, there was a glass roof. It was, well, fascinating. I mean, is, is that an overbridge? Uh, it's it? a, it, there's a pair of overbridges in fact it, it's a it's a canopy i think it, oh actually maybe the one behind isn't an overbridge definitely an overbridge in the foreground with the typewriter advert incredible but Remington. if you look just where the carriages are on the train can you see that the sunlight coming in there and yeah. that is a blowhole and uh i think we'll see that uh, more on that in a minute yeah and uh, look at the it? fashion in this I picture, know. right, Sid? I was thinking you can see the globe lights in this one really well as well. But it's look at the, the dresses and the feathers and the top hats. So fabulous. Mm. Glorious, isn't it? It's just we've, and, and the as we've seen before, so many posters on the wall. It was just like you must have stood there ages reading those. And of course, as we said before, Charing Cross was the name of that station, now known as Embankment. You can see that on the walls over there. The other you thing know, that always strikes, go on. Babe, go it's on. Re reminiscent. I think I said that in when we were uh, there yesterday, but it's, it definitely reminds me of Notting Hill Gate because it has mm. that same feel to it. And of course, before the round rolls or anything like that, they just had the names on a, on a simple um, kind of wooden block. But now... It's tough to, you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily see what station you're at because it's so kind of drowning in advertisement. Incredible, incredible. And one of the other things that always strikes me about that area is, is the fact that it's built on reclaimed river. 
um, because the whole of the Thames was effectively embankment gardens, the district and circle line, the big sewer and all that kind of thing were all put there because they they took the land back, if you like, from the river. And Chris, there is one of the pictures that you've got is of a part of embankment gardens that is still yeah. a beautiful architectural piece, but actually was a river gate. You're absolutely right. Uh, this, I think the idea, the nascent idea to do this episode came about um, <clears throat> when we were doing the Notting Hill Gate episode. And um, Sidney and I, if you remember, went for a little wander up into to, to, um, Notting Hill Gate Village uh, just to kind Love of... Love actually, style is Indeed, yeah. And uh, just near where that bookshop was on the other side of the road, there's a fantastic place that uh, sells prints and images, historic prints and images. And uh, there I indulged in a couple of um, original um, prints which show the foreshore uh, of the Thames. You can do better than that. You scanned it because you beast. So there we go. There go. Um, this is the one that um, Sydney and I were like, oh, got to do an yeah. episode on this because and I, I couldn't resist buying this because what you're looking at there is boats in what is now Embankment Gardens. And the district yeah. line would be somewhere just out of shot to the right hand side uh, yeah. floating in the Thames. Under the gondola. Um, I love and it. And there's the and there's the York Watergate. Yeah, just there. Look, can you see the one with the bubbles on the top? Yeah, they are long. Bubbles. They're, bubbles. they're <laughs> shells. Bubbles. They're these beautiful shells. But yes, yeah. um, well, we went there yesterday, of course, guys. We did. And in, in fact, City, you've done the job. Let's have a look at the film of our moment in the district line and the story surrounding it. So, Siddy, do you remember when we went walked around Notting Hill Gate after the episode then? Yep, I do. And we went into the lovely antique shops. Mm. And you've got a lovely illustration of that, haven't we? When all of this was shoreline mm -hmm. to the River Thames. I know. So this is the York Watergate, nice. guys. This is a very rare example of architecture from the, the time of King Charles I, so early 17th century. So. Just because we need to know these things, mm -hmm. everything this side of that was water. Yep. All of the Thames, Shoreline, yeah, completely. The Thames. All of this land was reclaimed in the 1860s when they built sewers and the embankment to fit them in. Um, and, and of course, the district line and as well. And in doing so, they created a cut and cover tube line. And, yep. and more importantly, a lovely place though, where, you know, can come and have lunch when you're working at London Transport Museum. It's very, very thoughtful of yeah, the Victorians. Absolutely. I'm yeah. crushing on the hydrangea. I don't mm. think that's hydrangea. It actually. is a hydrangea. It is oh, a hydrangea. There you yeah. Go. Yeah. Beautiful. And the lovely ornate stonework behind yeah. us is just beautiful. It's a really rare example of that time and it, that it still exists and it's there. You know, you can just imagine a boat coming down and sort of coming in through the water gate and up there. So, so I was just thinking, you know, Chris, about, you know, talk about all this. You and I could just be in charge of the gondolas for the girls and we could just sort of sail up to the arch. Oh, quite cool. Lovely. I mean, we're I doing the work. So we'll really always do the work. So always well. the legwork. I like that. I'll, I'll gondola you any day. I mean, oh. So, of course, Basil Diett really created the embankment to deal with the problem of the big stink, to, to create the sewers for London. But it gave one other opportunity, and that was for the district line to be built along the embankment. Here we are then on the eastbound platform, the district line platform. Since you've been here so many no. times before, what can we see? It's really amazing because, of course, this is the, the old uh, district line uh, railway or district railway which opened in 1868 this station opened in 1870 but you can see that it's of course the subsurface you can see some of that old fabric of the station just in the, the, in the ceiling there because of course it's a cut and cover station which all of those early ones were and we can also see there. that there's some daylight coming through and that's because that's the blowhole for all the steam that the early Incredible. locomotives would have would have been powered by so it's, it's oh it's really good and because it's obviously been changed quite a bit. Um, used to have a domed ceiling yeah. over here, now it's flat. And interestingly, on this platform, mm. Robin Denny, big artist at the time, back in 1985, covered the walls with this kind of stuff. Laura, what do you reckon of this? So this is a lovely piece of artwork by Robin Denny, who is famous for his abstract pieces of artwork. He was commissioned by Art on the Underground and took inspiration from the curvature of the River Thames just outside Embankment Station. These ribbons of colour actually represent the lines that service this station. So here we have the red 
that represents the tube, the blue that represents the river, and then the green and yellow, which are the tube lines. And what's really lovely about this space is you've got this brand new contemporary stuff that's you know only from the 80s, and then over there you've got that original uh, origins of the tube with the brick arches and the girders. So it's really nice to see the two together. And this survived the last refurb of the station as well. <laughs> Actually, Nixie, mm. private Rod, who's he? <laughs> I was hiding behind this door. Are you in the Rod? It's Rod? It's initials. Rail? Operations? Department. Let's say that. Should we say that? <laughs> right. Last week at London Bridge, we came across our first taster of the series of enamel tiles. Yeah. And here again, we've got some candidates. So, uh, Siddy, mm. with the magnet of the airlight, do you want to see which ones are and I which ones are? I never knew this was a thing, by the way. <laughs> I'd never heard that they did enamel tiles. So, you can see some cracking. So, this. Yeah. No, it doesn't work. It's hard if I go. Ooh! Look you at might that. even just be able to take your hand off the torch if you get a good grip, just to well, demonstrate. <laughs> you can see it's it's sticking. Yeah. But that's and so cool. And then you go, well, oh, no, nope. and here nothing. But then here, these are another. Most of the top banders yeah. as well, the top two bands. And, and if you look good. really closely in here, you can actually see the crazing of the proper ceramic ones mm. here and here but these enamel ones aren't crazed in the same way. Amazing. Why did they, you know, when was this? Is this original 1920s or? Yeah, I, I think where, where I've seen these before, it's sometimes because there's a panel behind it oh. uh, or it's sometimes because they've done replacements. I think, yeah, I don't know. Not sure why they've used them here, but there we go. Really cool, <laughs> really cool. Right. Nice. So let's go see some more. You see, at this point, we weren't actually that grubby because we were on the station. It was all fine. We'd been outside, got a bit of fresh air. Weirdly, though, Chris, you said York Gate. Debate over whether it's actually York Gate. Yeah, Sidney and I know it as a York Watergate. Um, there's an excellent walking tour of Covent Garden as part of the Hidden London uh, <laughs> series that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that Sidney and I put together. And you, part of it is going past that and explaining that history on the ground. But I noticed in the other image uh, that I bought, it describes it as the caption is Buckingham Watergate. So I think like a lot of these places, you know, names can be a little bit shifty over time and... <laughs> Enjoyed. Well, absolutely. Um, back to the pictures, uh, a cross section you have to offer us, Christopher. Yeah, so the station, the station's had a lot of remodels in its in its history. And uh, this was um, drawing from 1913, uh, showing how the remodel uh, might look in 1914 when uh, when the, uh, the rebuild. Yeah, when the Charing Cross Eastern Hampstead Railway is, is joining it. And you can see there's lovely glass dome. I was going to say, it's interesting because you've got like a glass dome there, but also, SIDS, when you think about a lot of the tube stations, especially Northern Lines tube stations south, uh, they had domes on the roof as well, but they were for lifts, weren't they? So domes kind of figured in various different lines and various different guises, didn't they? Yeah, and actually, um, thinking about it, there's been a sort of, I think, a, an ongoing experiment with domes and that kind of kind of skylight uh, technology mm. throughout the London throughout the the underground kind of history because you're right they had it at the city and south London stations which was of course just a dome and not really a skylight as you say keeping the lifts in um, but then later on Charles Holden often would design kind of domed skylights into his um, into his station so it's it's definitely something that's kind of evolved throughout the history yeah. of the underground. It's beautiful, it's so, so pretty. And um, mm -hmm. all through to 1927, Chris, we have a, another offer. You see, that is more like what we recognize now. Feels more mm -hmm. reminiscent, doesn't it, Law? It does, and it's lost kind of a lot of that big um, advertising boarding with the kind of big, bold, you know, exhibition, this way to Victoria, kind of, it's just, it's just a bit more subtle, isn't it? And yeah, much more what it looks like today, for sure. And they've widened the door for my COVID uh, size frame that's uh, come through now. <laughs> I'm a little weightier now than I was a year ago. So uh, I could get through that door, I reckon. It's, it's more reminiscent of what we know, isn't it? 
the other thing you can't help but notice is just how much the style and branding has come on. I mean, those uh, those first two images that we looked at of the original station were just like a riot of posters everywhere. It's a real kind of more is more approach to advertising. So you just don't really see any of it or take any of it in. But here you've got the bullseye is there, the big stretched underground with the big D, U and D, mm. and you've got that now familiar enamel poster uh, frame pair with the underground overprinted on the silhouette of the London skyline uh, oh. on either side. It's just a lot cleaner and easier to take in, isn't it? It now, says Bakerloo, Hampstead and District Railways. Mm. It's um, a very, very good clue there, Siddy, Madalen because uh, the next uh, little exploration we did was down into the brown line. Uh, brown because it's dirty. And uh, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> presume that's why they gave it a brown line. Everywhere we go on the Bay Luna, a bit grubby to backstage. And uh, we decided to have a bit of a butcher's hook around the uh, bits that nobody else gets to see. Wow. <laughs> so guys, um, where are we? Well, since you've been there before, been there a <laughs> few times. Show. Yep. So uh, go on. What we So at? this is what's really unusual about embankment: to interchange between the Bakerloo line and the District line when the Bakerloo line came in 1906. Um, they didn't put lifts or an escalator or a spiral, uh, uh, you know, a, anything. a spiral, anything. What they had was a very long ramp between the two lines. So that's where we're kind of about to climb up. Funny enough, though, they never really did the whole job, did they? There's always a set of steps. There was always something. You couldn't say there's a ramp right away from the district. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, no, it was oh, always a step. Down. And there was a step up, up there as well. But right. because, of course, the, the Bakerloo line, I think here, I mean, it's probably about 20, 20, 25 metres below ground, whereas, of course, the district is just subsurface. So it's an interesting... I don't think it exists anywhere else as an interchange, a ramp like that. Certainly very unusual. And uh, I mean, even ramps of that length are unusual. Mm. I think uh, when we went to Arsenal, Gillespie Road, <laughs> in that episode, Good we episode. Saw, saw one there, but not an interchange. Oh. Um, and You're going to talk about tiles, you? I'm not going to do tiles here. I, I'd mm. like to get, get further in, but it's you can see there's remnants. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, though, that, um, you know, should we have a little wander up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I find really peculiar also about something, it... Don't you find this... It's kind of like a sort of steep stairs. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel like the sort of steps that public would be nah. using. But, um, but the other thing I was going to say was, unlike a lot of stations where the, the back house stuff is kind of left pretty much untouched, a lot of the tiles are missing off here, aren't mm. they? There's a, it's, it's quite scant. But there's then there are still some other bits like this that are, that are still arrived, you know, the architraves and things like that. There's a lot chipped off. But yeah, it is nice to see the infills yeah. on the architraves still surviving here as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're gone in a lot of other places. Right. <coughs> just, just remind us, when we're walking through this door, there's SER and CER. We see CER a lot of places. What's mm -hmm. that stand for again? So SER is signal equipment room okay. and CER is control equipment room. Brilliant. Lovely mm -hmm. stuff. There you go. One for your vocab books there. And then we come through here, and this is where the well, this is where there's just loads of power. So um, we see this quite a lot. Standard uh, standard way of bringing people into a station along uh, Leslie mm. Green era was to do it from the side and over a bridge. So here we've yeah. got a bridge over the Baker Loop line. It's yeah. interesting to think where we are in the ground relative to sort of upstairs because we're now going to be walking quite a long way that way to reach the, the district line platforms even though that connection is no longer there. So we must be fairly far down the embankment towards Parliament really and that sort of side. Well, you, that... It's interesting you say that because that was one of the things that struck me. It felt, it felt like an unusually long walk mm, between is. the Bakerloo and the district line yeah. as you're about to see. Yeah. You said somewhere around that cabman's hut. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. Underneath, yeah, that's is what it Northumberland Avenue? That's but then, yeah. that doesn't quite make sense, though, because when you think of where Trafalgar Square is, the next stop up, which we did do an episode about that in, in season two, I think, yep. um, the, the, li the line doesn't quite work, does it? So maybe it's up towards Northumberland Avenue where we are now. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. saying. Yeah. That, that cabin's up that's at the oh, end of yep. This is interesting. So here we've got, we've seen one of these before yeah. uh, in the Hoban episode. I think we talked about these first, uh, which is Floodgate Door. You've seen quite a few of these, haven't you, City on the TV? So. Yeah. Uh, North End, pull the book. Yeah, North End has a massive one like that. Uh, 
What's unusual about this is it appears to have, I think that's an intumescent seal, so the event it's what? intumescent means it expands and it, it um, when it's it wet, fire, fire yeah. so uh, basically you get those on modern doors and they're designed to seal in the event of a fire, you see that stop smoke getting around that, that, that bit there. An intumescent seal. This Vocab book is the, yeah. blossoming today, isn't it? Well, I touched this earlier and I was like, ooh, what is that? Because I was scared it was asbestos yeah. or something. Yeah. It's not. It's fine. Interesting, as we walk around, we're still seeing little bits of smashed up tile as we go. So this would have been mm. this would have been public corridor, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, it is. Just to remind see, everybody. Just even like the, there's a bit of the architecture features that you see coming through there. What, what, what are those called again? A sort helmet, of? is it? Like a, just a bit of, you would describe yeah. it as an architecture. Yeah, yeah. architecture. Yeah. Cornice, yeah. particularly, that one, I think. Cornice. Cornice. Now, this is in some badly painted on lettering, uh, definitely not LT, is directing us that this is the passageway that leads mm. to the district line. Yeah. yeah. And what's quite interesting, everyone calls it Page's Walk or Page's Passage. You can see that. I don't know what the story behind that is, to be honest. Well, should we go and meet pages? And yeah, yes, absolutely. Head on. Oh, More tiles. And, we need ah, to get Laura in on this one. Laura, this is where I'm sure this is where you need to have a little feast of the eyes. Yeah, I haven't got any wet really wipes, beautiful. I'm afraid. Oh, but no look, wet wipes. But look, we've got brown. We've definitely got brown, and I've now got black on my fingers, but that's a beautiful colour brown and green and cream. What do you make of that? For me, this is really. Um, it's earthy, it's the earth tones. So it's the, it's the browns and the greens that, that, that kind of really... Oh, just for you. Oh, look. You know what? I just realized something, guys. These are almost exactly like the tiles at Trafalgar Square. They are. They're the same sort they of are. color. Yeah, there you go, there's your green. I mean, they're just gorgeous. There's your cream. Because you guys went to Trafalgar Square back in season two. And um, brown. You know you're not gonna get paid overtime for cleaning as well. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, I'll do anything for money. Uh, Look at that, there you go, you're creamy green in the ground. Thank you, Just through it. Look at Would that. you like that, by the way? Would you like that? It's <laughs> so good. Interesting also this, like, look at the, the slant of it. It's kind of... I'd love to have been as skilled as the tilers who yeah. used to tile these tube stations because they did such an incredible job, didn't they? But beautiful yeah. colours will do. They are, and I just, I love these sections that are kind of, the, the tiles are just nestled between parts of the cabling mm. and then the brickwork and it are kind of all, it just flits between all of those sections because it just gives you that little uh, kind of burst of history as, as you walk through the tunnel, just yeah. this little pocket of loveliness. But also, look guys, come on up. It is such a long corridor. We've already walked, you know, probably about 15 meters or so. Look at that. It's so far and also steep. Let's keep going. We got there's, there's going to be even better finds at the top. Mm. Good job we got our walking boots on. Massive cables here too. Thick, thick cables. And mm. as we go, look, still the tiles. I know. So this is all still public passageway. Sneaking out every so often. I can't believe though that they would have done this. It's like, and, and, and the fact that they then just stopped using it. Mm. Yeah. Because I mean, as a, as a walkway, it's, it's useful, you know? The green's harder to identify here, isn't it? Because it's so dusty. And but it's still sneaking through that lovely kind of grass green. I've still got my cloth if you want me to do a little Thank bit of white you, for you. Alex. And Thank the other you. thing that really strikes me about this area is how hot it is down here. Yep. It's so warm. Oh, wow. So, okay, this is really interesting because there's not a lot that we can kind of see what was here. But if we look just there, guys, you see the tiles would have continued and gone up another stairs. And then somewhere above there is where you would have gone to the district line platforms. And as you, you're absolutely right, because look, there's the witness marks on the tiles there, uh -huh. all in there. So th this has been quite heavily modified, this mm. whole area, right? Yes. Um, interestingly, Chris, we, we were just looking at the, this really crude concreting here. That's yeah. just to set cables in, presumably, right? Yeah, mm. very, I mean, it's the roughest I've ever seen. Yeah, it's pebbles. Pebbles right? are barely even bonded. But behind it, you've got, uh, what was the, you can see the original oh. architrave just there with that yeah. arch all yeah. the um, I just, so we've also got some uh, steps on oh, the floor yeah. there as well, leading to the treads. Mm -hmm. I noticed something up here, though, that's unexpected. Those tiles, yeah. you would not expect to go with the, uh, the coloured ones, because they are glass. The glass. 
But of course, we so saw thin. that at Trafalgar Square in that episode, didn't we? Yes, you did. In, on the other side right. of the lift shafts, the lift they shafts. have white glass tiles. Because and I think the was the bigger lose. The mix, didn't it? Absolutely. Which is a hangover from what the Central London Railway did. Yep. Uh, now the Central Line. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's the only two places I've ever Me seen too. that mix yeah. of the coloured. Uh, like the green yeah. type and the, the because white ones. the Metropolitan District Railway didn't really use tiles anywhere on their stations, did they? I don't think so. Glass ones. No, no. So. no. Uh, you really can see how well they do their job. That way. Yeah, Look at how wow. bright they are once they're smashed and you get it's, the original. It's very white. unusual. We get two of our lovely experts in shot at the same <laughs> time. But what I wanted to ask you was about these tiles. For anyone, you know, and we know many of you really like our tile talk. Certainly, Laura loves it as well. Who's holding the camera at the moment? But these glass tiles, I always thought they were City and South London Railway. Yeah. And then it kind of threw me because they were at Trafalgar Square. There was yeah. How central, regularly were they used? The, the Central, central, used central well. London Railway, um, City and South London. And then we think, so the, the Bakerloo line was actually, they started to excavate it a little bit earlier yeah. than when, so I think in 1903, it was one of the first that they actually started to work on. And so I think, this is me surmising, they started using the white glass tiles and then as they started building more of these they realised that the, the, you know, the, the ceramic ones were better. Yeah. And probably too I, fragile. I, well, I, I think they, they were trying to create that new identity, weren't mm. they? And you think about how strong that identity is with the colour tiling. Yeah. Um, you've only ever seen pockets, or we've only ever seen pockets of these white ones. Uh, and I do think that Trafalgar Square one mm. is the most unusual. You've got white tiles on one side of the lifts and then the coloured ones It was curious. It's almost like they were using up yeah. spares. It, it's yeah. very, very yeah. odd. Like but um, yeah. fascinating stuff always. Yeah. Should, we, uh, should we push so, on through? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the temperature has suddenly got a lot hotter and I'm seeing more and more air conditioning units just yeah. choking out hot, hot air. Where, where are we now? Well, we're coming to the bit that's sitting uh, covered on the show. Which is the former substation. I just know we're going to just be filthy when we leave here. So this is suddenly this is not public, right? This no. is just dirty old bricks, a very sort of familiar. In fact, actually, do you know, it looks just like the the, the ceiling of the platforms to the district line. Those little archways, doesn't it? It does. Uh, if we look up there, you've got that vaulted ceiling, and uh, so you've got the girders, which are sort of rusted black colour. And then uh, you've got those got a barrel vaulted uh, ceiling. Let me just get into shot for just a second, Chris, just to say that this is the size of me. I'm five foot seven, five foot eight. This is this is so large. You, I can't even see how big that is around there. I'm, I've got no idea. I cannot see an extent to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, as Chris said earlier, there's obviously a it's member of stuck in the concrete. It's shrouded in the wet cement, and that's all that's left. But, but down there's a sump. There's a huge sump down there. Loads of cables. Uh, Presumably this is the power, this is like a power station, is it? Yeah, so the substation, it's where you bring in uh, mains power and convert it into direct current. Uh, so AC comes in that's right. and DC goes out to the trains and the, everything else escalators. Yeah, AC, DC. AC, DC. Black and black, yeah. And it, it's, uh, yeah, this is where you convert the AC mains power into the DC that the tube uses. And back in the day, you needed really big equipment. You needed those mercury out rectifiers that we have at the depot. Great tanks for it's big glowing glass like things, right? Arcs, yeah. Well, the big ones are made out of steel. Yeah. Um, Wasn't there one at Belsize Park? Belsize uh, Park, Belsize Park. Yes, there's a glass one, yeah. smaller glass one there, but yeah. the ones for the trains are huge. We've got one at Acton, the right. depot, just inside the depot. Massive steel tank. Mm. And uh, yeah, they, they kick off a lot of heat and uh, they're very physically large, so mm. that's why this is a big space. And with them being mercury, are they dangerous? Uh, they are before you take the mercury out of them. Right. Yeah. yeah, well ours has been drained. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah, um, quite, uh, quite an impressive space that's been left behind. And the reason it's left behind is there's a more modern one that's built next to the station. So this is basically just dormant space, just mm. left? Yeah, I mean it's been like repurposed. You've got this block work here for some control equipment. Remember CER that side that we passed earlier? That's what's inside there. Gorgeous. I know this would be really difficult to film in this space, just because mm -hmm. of the logistics of it. Yeah. But is anybody else getting kind of quite dystopian vibes? Like it could be Gorgeous. kind of like some 
villain's lair in a film. Mm. Like, what an awesome! It just, it's just making me think. It, it's such a great like scene for a film. Can or you a imagine movie. a music video being filmed? Oh, it mm. would look absolutely Epic. incredible. See, told you it was grubby. And uh, it, but it was a nice little view, you know. I have to say, Sid. I mean, you did give us a bit of a tour, you and Nixie. It was a good little recce. Mm. And again, it's so strange that you know that is all still there, and it's such a kind of unique and weird long little tunnel um, that you know. As I said, I couldn't think of yesterday uh, a ramp like that to interchange between different lines. But then Chris did come up with one. Mm. Chris, do you want to share? Yeah, well, while we were walking around, it suddenly occurred to me there was another ramp that we had an interchange and uh, it, we, of course, should have remembered it because we did the walk of the Waterloo and City Line tunnels when we uh, had engineering hours. And yeah, that's got a monumentally difficult ramp there, which is not only quite steep, but also has steps which are on a slope in it as well. So it's yeah. Cool one. I still wanted though, I wanted to get my bike or my skateboard out and go down that ramp. <laughs> I just thought it's a thousand steep, times. Though. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fear, I'm completely fearless, you know, not really. Um, Laura, I've got something for you now, or rather, Mr. Nix has got something for you, a little gifty for you. It's a poster. Oh, love a poster. Look at that. What do you make of that then, Laura? Oh, let me have a little gander. I love it. Is that a sink plunger and a bullseye? No, <laughs> it's an arrow piercing the heart of London. <laughs> That's what you want. The heart of London. Good Alex. work. Oh, look it at came that. out on Amazing. Valentine's Day. Pretty in it though. Hampstead Did Railway it? Bakery. Is that why that's no, like that? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty though, Law. What do you reckon? I thought Cupid was working some of uh, some of their magic. Then I like this because they like because of all the different levels that are going on above ground and below ground, and then obviously below ground the, the different levels that are working. And I like seeing all the little people going um, up the escalators or along the passageways. And mm. I've said this before, but my brain likes a cutaway or a cross section because I think with London there's so much going on below your feet, you know, underground, subterranean, that I think sometimes you forget that it's a very intricate network, um, you know, a bit like a maze or a labyrinth at times. And so these posters kind of peel away a little bit of the kind of detail and just, just they let my mind focus on kind of, you know, how crazy it is underground. So I like this poster and I love the colours. I love the colours. Gorgeous. So I love the colours in this and um, I think it, it, it makes my mind go back to the, the, when I said about the tiles being quite earth tones with the greens and the browns and so this poster for me very kind of much reflects that as well um, and so embankment for me is just becoming those kind of lovely earth tones um, which is really lovely. Well just hold your plums for a minute because there's oh. something really cool to come. Christopher Nix you got your hand up. I yeah. have. There's a couple of things that I really love about this poster, just to, to pull out. You know, I was talking earlier about the fact that the Northern Line only had one platform at this point. There it yeah. is, right hand yeah, side of the poster, that. very, very yeah. clearly. Uh, and, and the then, long corridor between. Right, yeah. And, yeah. and and also, if you look at the Baker, I'm getting too excited now, on the Bakerloo line on the left, can you see you've got those lattice bridges shown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, again, we saw those bridges. Uh, oh, where, 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 where? Can you see on the, on the left, right there, You've got two, oh, yeah. two tunnels oh, and a little right. lattice. I, I, High top. Yeah. Th this, this, remember, this is 1914 poster. It's by uh, Charles Charland, who you might remember when we did the Hampstead episode. We saw quite a lot of his his work showing the dream of you know going for a little um, day trip out to to Hampstead in that that same period. We take our eyes back up to surface level. Look on the left-hand side in front of the trees and the buildings. There is a single deck tram yeah. working its way uh, down the, uh, down the, but at least it looks to me like a single deck tram. Where? Oh, Just on black, what, Northumberland thing. Avenue. Like yeah. Right mm. there. Oh. The places I yeah, can go. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a single deck tram. Um, I'd have to see the original. Don't think it's a horse bus. It looks a little Love bit too, it. too long. Ah. So I'm just thinking, Kingsway, uh, because it's a bit mm. before that was uh, that tunnel was built, but this is part of the southern uh, tra uh tram network. Yeah, yeah, oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, actually, yeah. speak, speaking of Kingsway, did you guys know that we're adding some dates to the tours that we're running? Yes, well, we do yeah. now. Well, if you haven't had a chance to get a ticket to Kingsway, dear viewers, and you would like to do so, uh, we'll, we'll be releasing them soon. I'm not sure, but keep an eye on the 
e-newsletter if you if you've subscribed but it's an awesome tour Laura and I and Chris worked super hard at it so uh we're delighted that we're bringing it uh to more people basically I love it I did not Just do a clarify, stroke I... of work on it not a stroke of work I'm hoping to be invited as a guest onto this trip around the trams next We've got an escalator, haven't we, Christopher? We do. So here's a great photo of what escalators used to be like. What's the difference with the modern ones? Oh, well, isn't that the, isn't the grab rail going round the top on a funny, what is that? that right. Is so look, right, the, the, the treads carry on way past the, the end of what we would think of an oh, escalator. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. And then it kind of shoes you out to the side. Um, I, I've had nights on the pop when that would have been very useful. Right. To be ushered off an escalator to the side. On like the a, pop. Yeah, on the <laughs> pop. Uh, the that would be very is, useful. The only thing is, of course, they take up a lot more space doing yeah. that because uh, you've got yeah. all of that encroachment into and, the... And is know. that coming from the Northern Line or the Becquerelieu? Yeah, the, the caption for this one in our information management system just says uh, it's a escalator between the northern and the Bakerloo. Um, so it doesn't exactly say where it is. Okay, I'm getting a bit frisky for a film, but before that, uh, Laura, prepare to have your brains blown by this. Always love it when I discover we've got a Douglas <gasps> McPherson um, cutaway diagram of a station. We've seen it at Leicester Square. We saw one for Piccadilly Circus. They're an absolute... In fact, we saw one for Knightsbridge as well, didn't we? And I'm not um, giving away too much information when I say that we were all chatting away, gas-bagging around that tube station. There is a, an uppy downy escalator moment where we had to use the escalator twice or maybe three times because we got <laughs> on the wrong escalators because we weren't concentrating at embankment. Uh, Laura, is that enough to tickle your pickle? That might... Tickle is pickled. My pickle is tickled. <laughs> <laughs> Just like last night. My mind is blown. I can't cope right now, to be fair, because there's a lot. There's a lot going on, um, yeah. and I've not seen this picture before. Um, I would like to say though that we didn't use the escalator twice because of me and my bad sense of direction. I was yeah. just following. I was blindly yeah. following these you guys. You made the um, mistake of following away. me. <laughs> yeah, I, d I wasn't very good <laughs> bus there, Chris. I was just saying you guys. I was grouping you together. I, just, I, just, what, I knew that the viewers would probably think, "Well, that's Laura," because she has no idea where she's going at any point no, in life. Not at all. We um, love you, but I do think that it's one of the most complicated stations to navigate embankment. It really is for me. It's up your little stairs, down your little stairs. There's all sorts of bits and bobs. There's, oh, as you're going to see in a minute, there's even a bit of the station that's there and you're not meant to use it. It's just madness. In fact, actually, Chris, I think we ought to have a little look at our escapades on the Northern Line. Now, lovely, lovely people. This is something I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. There's an emergency, well, there's a set of stairs over there. Yep. No entry. What's that about? You, you know, it's stairs, so we're supposed to be able to use it, right? Well, if you see around the corner, this is an emergency only staircase. And yeah, it leads to possibly one of the most ornate passageways mm. that I've ever seen on the tube. So do not use except in emergency. But this is the clue. Look. And also, look how lovely it, like pink, this colour. Like a salmon-y colour, isn't yeah. it? But that I love, because this is a prelude to what we're about to see. This, Laura, is what we all just need to enjoy for a minute. Because mm. this, if you think this is quite nice in this corridor, mm. step this way. It's just beautiful, isn't it? And this is arguably one of the prettiest corridors around. Lots, lots of long corridors here at Embankment, aren't there? Absolutely. Mm. And the tile work on this one, I mean, this is heavily photographed, this corridor isn't it yeah. lots and lots especially on instagram it's an insta friendly corridor isn't it what no, i'm going to take go on, go on. No, was, what i love is the different shapes of sizes of the original kind of poster boards um, and how all of these are kind of fitting in with that now mm -hmm. i'm going to take over the camera because chris will be able to explain to us what this is all about well a lot of these things are there to set the grandeur of the tube um, we've talked before about how the yiki stations it was part of the corporate identity and there is such attention to detail on this. These things are handmade, which is why you get the enormous variation. And if you want to see just how um, noticeable it is, just come in here where one's been replaced. See that one? 
that's not original. And it stands out straight away because when they tend to be replaced now, they'll aim for the middle of that color range and it ends up just looking like a sludgy single color and misses this beauty of this green through to kind of a sea, sea green, almost turquoise. And that actually goes back to what Mick was saying at Knightsbridge, wasn't he, about yeah. how they're matching the colors with new tiles to try to, to at least hark back to the old colors. Well, that's right. In the Knightsbridge episode, he was saying the reason they've decided to replace them all is because of that. Where you put a non-original next to original just stands out. The glazes that are used now are different. I suspect a lot of the things in that glaze are now toxic, considered toxic, and so you can't use them. So trying to match them now, A, very expensive, B, could be quite unsuccessful. And that, for that reason, they tend to just replace the lot. And you just heard that. We need to go and find out a little bit more because the story of that Mind the Gap is possibly my favourite story of all underground folklore, Sid. The thing I love about this station, over and above all the other bits we've talked about, is the noise we're about to hear when the trains come into the northbound platform mm -hmm. of the Northern Line. Yep. It is a very, very, very well-spoken actor. Yep. And the story behind it is incredible, isn't it? Yep, Oswald Lawrence, as the train comes in, we're about to hear it. There's like a lovely ding, and then you, you hear it, so. So, Love the it. story behind Oswald. Well, Os he gets everywhere, doesn't he? So, Oswald actually recorded this in sort of the middle part of the 20th century. And it's always been there. It's always, you know, sounded out in the underground. Um, however, Oswald passed away in 2006. And so, um, his wife, his, his widow, would come to this platform to hear the voice of her late husband. So um, in 2012, they replaced the recordings with a new voice. And so when she got here, her, she could no longer hear Oswald. So she was really upset. She wanted to uh, get the recording on you know, a, a CD or DVD. So in the end, TFL got her the copy of her husband's voice, but also reinstated the voice just in this location so she could still hear Oswald. And it's interesting because this is the only platform at the station that needs it mm. because it's on such a tight bend. Absolutely, and why is it on such a tight bend, I hear you it's ask? It's got well, to be because of the loop, surely. It is, it is indeed. On last week's episode, uh, Alex and I got inside the mechanism of one of the big floodgates on the system, but yep. we've got a rather smaller one here, haven't we, Yeah, Siddy? two of them, or three, is three. it three? Yes, yeah, three <laughs> in total. So these would slide down and like, lock in place on the platform. And these ones, rather than trying to prevent the flooding into the tunnel, this is there to prevent flooding into the passageways yeah. of the system. And honestly, this always reminds me, I, I say this every time, but it reminds me of that scene in Titanic where they're trying to shut down the engine rooms to make sure it doesn't flood, because it just kind of looks like it would do that. It makes me scary. think kind of Indiana Jones, because these ones drop down oh, yeah. uh, from above, so, so you have to grab your hat as you go through. Yeah. Now, I've had people say, oh, these look like, you know, they, would they ever fall down uh, on people? But they are actually chopped in place. There's a catch mechanism, a physical one, that had to be released before these ones could operate. So they're quite safe, and it's nice to see them still survive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So look, now we're on the northern line. So we now have the black stripes that go with the water and the tube. And your hands, look. You've got black <laughs> hands to go with the northern line. Chris, what were you saying up here? Because there's something else to look well, at up on this platform. Last week, uh, we were at London Bridge and we found that rarest of all things, a surviving floodgate and its mechanism. Well, there was one which was identical to that just here. And you can kind of see where the tunnel mouth has been squared off, can't you? Absolutely. I, you know, I just don't think I'd ever have looked at that and realised what it was either. Just to locate ourselves, this is the southbound platform of the Northern Line, OK? So the trains come in from this direction That's right. and go out that way. And so beyond there is the River Thames. And the big fear uh, during the build-up to the second, the Britain entering the Second World War was that there would be a bomb strike sufficiently large to breach the tunnel. That was before they did a load of work to better defend the tunnels. And so their first solution was simply to concrete up the tunnels. Uh, but then that was while they got these electrically powered gates 
uh, so that they could seal it off as soon as an air raid was called, seal it off, and that way you keep the station safe. And then those other floodgates that we were just looking at are a secondary defence so that if that were to breach, then it would prevent the secondary flooding of the rest of the that station. That was my question. I couldn't work out why there was one there and one across the passenger exits and entrances to the platform. It's just as a, as a fail-safe. It, it is, and it's just simply because those early, uh, those early tunnels were particularly vulnerable back then to flooding, and so they really had to defend these well. Now you see the oh, Northern Line, so fascinating, was one platform, ended up being two platforms when the Northern Line went further south. Um, and that loop that was there, you've got to get your head around where it is, what it is and how it was. Chris, there's a, an amazing diagram that you guys have got at the museum that kind of illustrates what it is and where it actually was located. Look at that. I mean, that is, that's the Northern Line. Um, Charing Cross Branch, as it once was, southbound, round the loop, and there's your yeah. platform to go back north on the bend, explaining where that, why that platform is on the bend, and Oswald bangs out the mine, the gap, because of the mm -hmm. bend of that platform. It's a fascinating city, so mm -hmm. fascinating. Well, it, what, it, what it's basically, so for those who are watching this and going, what are you talking about? So the lower of the upper two <laughs> running tunnels is the original, and that's where the loop would have gone. You can see it's been kind of filled in because, of course, that loop is no longer in service at all. Uh, and that, that's why it goes around there. And then the straight one is the southbound one, which we also went to. But, yeah, it's, an, it's, it's, it's incredible, really, and so clever to, you know, alight people at embankment and then just go straight around this loop and up back you go to Charing Cross or the Strand, as it was called then. Because it, it, you, it would mean that the driver wouldn't have to get out and change ends and do all that mechanical stuff that him, the guard, would have done um, mm -hmm. to, to get the train going the other direction back to Edgware, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's Fascinating. Really Laura, they don't, act, they, don't, they don't make them like that anymore, babe. They don't. And just, um, can I ask a question? Yes. Is, this is pre the Kennington extension, correct? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so, the, the, the diagram is actually post. Yeah. That, um, because this is showing the the new lines right. going through, but the the loop was there before that extension down to Waterloo and onto Kennington was done. And just to, to hammer home that point, that the bottom of that loop is the Northern Line platform as we know it now, and that's on the bend, and the one in the middle, as Siddy said, the black one is the southbound. And if we just zoom out slightly, all of that pipe work, as it looks like there, they're the corridors between the Northern and the Bakerloo line, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the key thing to, to understand, if this is the first time you've seen this diagram, is where you can see that uh, Met District Railway uh, going on a slight angle south to north, all of that loop to the right hand side is underneath the river thames yeah. uh, you can see in the diagram the shading it was it was sealed off and it was it was as well that that happened before the second world war because that was the only bit of tunnel that was compromised by a bomb hitting it and did flood but they'd already sealed it so it wasn't actually a problem thankfully mm -hmm. um so yeah um it was for the best that that tunnel was already disused before the war kicked off that, that diagram as well is fascinating because you can see strand station on there that we now know as charing cross on the northern line to the left and it says river thames and victoria embankment just around the bottom of that loop as well just by that bit of pipe work i was talking about earlier um in embankment it is a really really cool diagram actually and i love I mean, Laura, this is again up your snicket. Um, the calligraphy um, that goes on in that top left-hand corner, I absolutely adore it, the lettering. Yeah, the, the writing is beautiful. And I was, ju I was just looking at that. Um, did, did, you used to, did you want to be a calligrapher or have I just made that up? I did learn calligraphy, yeah. I've yes, got a very lovely half unical hand. That. But it's just, it's beautiful, isn't it? It just flows and um, I, I wish I could write like that. It's gorgeous. Have you, if you've never serifed with a wide nib, you've never lived. That's what I would say. Um, it's beautiful uh, as he looks down at his notes. Um, we've got three floodgates to look at, haven't we, Chris, as well? Oh, look yeah. at that. So um, some of the ones that we looked at uh, while we're on the station, here's their historic images, which are shot from the track with a very powerful flash and therefore rather easier to see what's going on. So this is one of the platform shutters where you can see that uh, Indiana Jones and the um, kind of <laughs> uh, aperture door 
um, closing down with it there on on the chains wound around that uh, that giant sprocket wheel. Uh, really, I love all that, all really that again. detail. And you you mentioned when we we're in the um, in the platform, you mentioned chocks. Um, you weren't being the milk train man, were you? Chocks are the things that stop wheels moving on planes, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. On on these gates to stop them accidentally deploying and really doing an Indiana Jones on somebody. Um, you can imagine they're quite heavy, so they come down with a heck of a bang. I think if they uh, fell uncontrolled, uh, just at the tops, uh, kind of here. And here at the top of the uh, the doorway, there are those two um, uh, kind of levers which chock the um, chock the door and stop it dropping. So you'd have to pull those out of the way. Show us another. Yeah. Um, show us another floodgate. I show us your chocks, Chris. <laughs> okay, so if if. Um, if people are watching this and didn't see last week, uh, the sorry, two weeks ago, the episode on uh, London Bridge, then I suggest go back and have a look at that because um, that's where the three of us were poking around in the mechanism that we can see here on the left hand side of a giant floodgate. We couldn't get a decent um, long shot of the floodgate there because it was all tucked away in situ. But that's what uh, the one at London Bridge would look like. And that one is the picture from Embankment Station. So that would have been at right. the, possibly at the end of we, uh, the Northern Line platform. We think that's the Northern Line uh, platform southbound. That yeah, because it's as we saw that sort of slightly straighter, squared off straighter platform tunnel yeah. entrance. Yeah, I mean it's fascinating to see all this kit and caboodle, isn't it? Really. Um, so so far the, the story is remarkable, isn't it? Um, but we have one more picture to show you um, because Embankment Station has had so many different lives. But that central concourse, the Booking Hall area, which now has a series of very, very lovely shops, um, used to be an exhibition area. And um, this is a model railway that was put there to just, well, I, I guess, show off people's work. There were loads of these exhibitions. I mean, we even got one of, uh, there was a milk marketing one that had Daisy the cow in a pen in there. But this this one, uh, this one is slightly less crazy. Um, this is um, displaying the model maker Bassett Lokes um, models. And you can see they've got, they've got quite a sizable layout there. Do you notice, if, just have a look at the station. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Bit of... Uh, Bit of Holden-esque uh, rotunda yeah. going on there. That's so nice, isn't it? Um, it's clever, look, clever, at clever. The, look at the train as well. A standard stock train. Yeah, it's like it, Is doesn't that it? Like from the 1920s? Yeah. Wow. So, um, now, of course, Bassett Loke uh, not only made models of this side, they made absolutely huge um, ride-on or ride-in uh, locomotives, places like um, the owner of the Romney Hyde and Dimchurch Railway bought a fantastic amount of very large working uh, steam uh, trains uh, from Bassett Loke. So, yeah, they were a massive model maker in the UK back then and clearly took a huge amount of pride in recreating some of the other ground. See, we have some of these things in our collection. Actually, we've got some Bassett Loke models in our, our collection. Gorgeous. And one final poster. I'm, I'm Take a bit of a punt on this, Chris, that you've got it. And if I made a mistake, apologies. Mm. No, no, oh, you, you got, got it. Absolutely there. You got uh, it. Laura's there Laura. bit, bit of Robin Denny. It's all there, baby. It's all there for you. It totally yeah. is. And look at that brilliant alliteration as well, like embankment, emblazoned. I love it. Um, and I, I actually really like this piece of artwork by Robin Denny. I know we spoke about it um, on the clips as well. Um, but what a lovely, uh, I guess, reflection of taking inspiration from the Thames. And I, I mentioned before about Embankment being so close to the Thames and all of those ribbons of colour not only reflect the colours of the lines that service the station, but reflect the, the kind of curves and the, um, the shapes and the flow of the River Thames as well. I think that's a really, really lovely piece of artwork. It's a beautiful bit of artwork and it reminds me very much of my teenage bedroom because you used to be able to buy wallpaper just like that in Texas home care for four ninety nine a roll, and it had the glue on the back already. So it's ready pasted wallpaper, just like that. I had that all over my wall at home. Little did I realise my tube geekery started at such a young age. 
Uh, Alex, I've just got to draw attention to the bottom. You know how you were saying earlier about how the station is really complicated? Um, this poster has got a, a little cartoon in the bottom right by an uh, <laughs> artist called Frank Dickens. And if you see, the little character is just saying, after this place, Hampton Court Maze is a doddle. And it's just got those signs going everywhere around him. So, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, even the underground tacitly agreed with you back in 86 that it's a complex station. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, there you go. Uh, a little trip around Embankment Station for you. We hope you enjoyed that. It's a complicated old station. You know, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot going on. You probably will want to watch this episode again just to get the timeline. But the District Railway, then came the Bakerloo, then came what is effectively now the Northern Line, all the changes, all the artwork, all the tiles, the closed off bits, the open bits, and go and find yourself a little, little space of greenery in Embankment Gardens because it is just a beautiful, beautiful space. And team, you don't know this, but when I was at university, I used to go and revise for my degree exams in Embankment Gardens. Now, everybody thought the reason I was there was to revise, but I actually used to be eyeing up the gardener. That was why I was there. It was a very, very lovely time. And I'd, thankfully, I, I mean, I, a couple more moments of concentration could have got a really decent grade for my degree. I could have got a first. It could have been amazing. <laughs> Sids, could you imagine my eyes being diverted in that way? Oh, not at all. That, that, that seems completely impossible, really. It? Is it almost <laughs> impracticable? It would be lovely. Mr. Nix. Instead of a first, you've got a first. Oh, oh, good work. Anyway, moving on. Notes, queries and questions. Um, we need to have a little moment to talk about the London Bridge episode because, um, uh, Chris, it's uh, the numbers are uh, astounding. Yes. Hurrah. It's lovely. Uh, it's so good that so many people uh, seem to have taken such a shine to the station as we did. Uh, fantastic place to explore. Um, I myself have watched the episode about seven times because um, it was uh, so much to take in, even though we were there. Fantastic. And Laurie, got your boots clean yet? Yeah, it was a bit dusty yesterday, but London Bridge was a lot dustier and a lot hotter, wasn't it? But we we do some great site visits. But yeah, London Bridge was subterranean exploring at, at its best. It was it was a definitely a wow moment for me. City, we've only done half of it. We're going to go back and do the Jubilee line bit in a subsequent episode. So um, are you looking forward to that? Yes. And I also kind of I feel like you guys have to also take me to the parts that you went to because I need to see all of that. So, yes, we can do that. We can do that. A couple of comments, really. Uh, your notes, queries and questions today, really just uh, things that you've said about the episode. Daniel Scott says fantastic episode. Hit after hit. Jill said, uh, sorry, Gail says simply fabulous. Are there hidden secrets at Old Street? Now, interestingly, I suggested that the Northern City line would be a really cool episode. Is that doable, Chris and Sids? I'd have thought so. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so so many places, only so many weeks. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Jeffrey Bale says, "Come to Hamburg. We've got the oldest tiled underground tunnels from the old world Tataria. The oldest tunnel is under the river Elbe, Fluss Elbe, Zidi. Yeah. Um, with every tile being different." Um, Paul Barton says, another great episode. Thanks for doing this. Love seeing so much of the stations on video, not just in photographs. We enjoyed filming it as well. And actually, Chris and uh, Fran from the station, thanks for all the help you gave us with London Bridge as well. Um, what else we got? Paul says, uh, wow, this is the best episode yet. Thank you, Dina. I really don't know how you four keep up with this. Each series just astounds me. Pure dream to watch and what a difference London Bridge is from its predecessor. I could carry on with this. It's just loads and loads and loads. Alison and Christopher and Ian and Dave and Rob and uh, Robert Lilly, McParler, Gary Newman, Aaron Reed. Um, also interesting, uh, Aaron says, um, good to hear Alex mentioned at 56 uh, minutes in, uh, that the thing that was playing on my mind uh, as I watched it, uh, what's happening with the expansion of bank and monument has already happened at London Bridge. It's that whole thing of moving platforms way to the side in order to produce these central concourses, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, same same thing with Angel, slightly differently applied. There's yeah, it's um, it's something that's just become necessary because the the numbers on the tube have massively exceeded what they were ever planned to be. So yeah, cool stuff. And Drew says best episode yet. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, Laura, thank you so much for coming along and grubbying up with me in embankment yesterday. Pleasure. I had a lot of fun. And the wine was nice afterwards. Siddy, um, uh, you and Chris had to go off after wine to go and perform in your, um, in your London Transport Museum house band. I hope that was all right. 
yeah it was really good we had a great great audience and uh despite not having rehearsed as much as we would have liked it was uh it was a success but it was so fun being back out in uh in a station with you guys exploring and out in the network you know properly tunnel grubbing it was great and chris nix as always thank you so much for your expertise your touring guidance and your giggles uh, lovely stuff yesterday. The um, yeah, so nice to go and see the station. Also nice to get back into Embankment Gardens itself. So much so, <laughs> I could barely do the introduction of the show without calling it Embankment Gardens. It was beautiful. It was a lovely, lovely moment as always. As always, uh, find us on Instagram. You've got Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law, Alex Grundon, and at LT Museum. Also, you've got us on YouTube. The numbers, as I say, are astounding, and we are so grateful to you for coming on this journey with us. Like. Please like and subscribe and comment down below with anything you want to say about the episodes. We read out your comments as well and uh, any suggestions you've got for future episodes. And as I say, keep watching because we've got some amazing episodes still to come. Have yourself a great day and stay safe.